Hello and welcome to a new Google Forms and Google Sheets video in Practical Sheets. Today we are going to link or synchronize Google Forms and Google Sheets, but not in the way you expect. What I want to do is the following. I have a form, in this case a course enrollment form, where my students or the ones that are interested in my courses can enroll in any of my courses. So normally what I would do is some questions, name, age, email, and here I will set up manually the courses I offer. For example, introduction to sheets and some others. So for the moment I have three courses, but what if my course selection changes all the time and tomorrow I have four and in one month I have five or in two weeks I deleted this course. This works very well for categories, for sellers, for offices, for cities that are not that many, but may change constantly, are dynamically change. And I don't want to have to be coming here every time to my Google Forms and changing it manually, deleting this, adding some others, changing the names, etc etc what if i could link this question to a google sheet where i have my course list and i don't care if there i change it with a formula with a function with whatever but that, that i'm sure that this is always updated with the real data this is what i'm going to do so i have i've already done my google forms it's called course enrollment I have three questions, the name, the age, this could be the email or whatever else. And the question I'm interested is in the course I want to enroll. And I have three options. This is a multiple choice. It's very important for what we're going to do today, the type of question. If it's a multiple choice, a checkbox, a drop down, this changes my code and we need to know this. For now, let's leave it as a multiple choice. And Let's take a look at how will it be, okay? That's it. So as this is a new Google form, I'm going to assign or create a new Google Sheets file that is synced up with this form. So I'm going to responses. I'm going to press this button and this will create a new spreadsheet. For now, I don't care about this form responses actually it wouldn't matter if this is not in this sheet, it could be in any other sheet. But normally we like to have only one form and only one sheet. So it is usual that the sheet where I have my options is the same one where I collect my answers, just that they're in another sheet. So I'm going to create a new sheet. And I'm going to call this options. And here is where I'm going to have all the options I need. If I have multiple questions here, maybe in a future video of this series, if you like it, I could play with other possibilities. But for now, we're going just to change this question. So here I'm going to have a course list and let's write them again. Okay, so again, what I want to do is to update this question with this list. That's it. So let's do it. The first thing I want to do is to connect my sheet to my Google form. For this, I'm going to go to app script and I'm going to create a function that's going to be called identify questions. You're going to see what I mean with this. So I'm going to say form app instead of spreadsheet app, which is what I normally use for Google spreadsheet. And I'm going to connect to a specific Google form. How do I do this? With the open by ID or open by URL. I'm going to use open by ID. I'm going to open my parentheses, open double quotation marks, and I'm going to copy this ID. I'm going to paste it here. And this is my form. Let's put it in a form variable. And now I have my form. Now I want to see my questions. Because the first thing I'm going to need is 
the ID of this specific question. In order to connect with this question, I need to know which ID it has. And one way to do it is form dot get items. This will bring all the items of my form, the questions, the videos, the sections, etc. Here I would only have three items that are three questions. So I'm going to call these questions and I'm going to loop through my questions. Given that this is an array, how do I know this is an array? Because if I put parentheses here in the help area with these square brackets, I know that this will return an array of form up items. And here it says, get an, gets an array of all items in the form. Given that it's an array, I know that I could use a method such as for each. That is a method that loops through an array, through all the elements of my array. So I'm going to go through all of my questions, all of my items, because not necessarily they are going to be questions. I know that in my case, they are only questions. And what I'm going to do for now is log the title and log the ID, because what I need right now is the ID. So let's log the title. What do, why do I log the title? Because I need to make sure that the ID is of this title. So question dot get title. Then actually before the ID, I'm going to log the type and you'll learn why later. So let's get the type. And finally, I'm going to log the ID. Question dot get ID. And given that this is sometimes a big number, so I'm going to convert it to a string just to make sure I see the complete number. So let's save and let's run as this is the first time I'm going to run it. It's going to ask me some permissions. I gave it the wrong ID. The correct ID is this one. I chose the ID of the published form and not of my Google Forms file. Okay, so I'll put it here again. I'll save and run again. Perfect. Now I have it. I'm going to copy this, paste it here, and enclose it in a comment. How do I do this? I'm going to press Alt Shift A. And I know that it's a comment, so it's not going to damage my script. So what I needed to know is this. The name is a text question with this ID. The age is a text question with this ID. And the curse is a multiple choice question. Again, very important to know the type with this ID. Okay, so this function, I'm not going to use it anymore, but I'm going to leave it there. Why? Because it will help me every time I add new questions, for example, to know the IDs of each of the questions. So it's good to leave this function always uh, somewhere accessible. For now, I'm going to do the function that interests us, and it's the update dropdown or update question function. Again, I'm going to connect first with my form. Then I don't want to connect to all the questions, but just to a specific question. So I can call this course question. And I'm going to say form, get me the specific question of the form, which has this ID. So I'm going to copy this ID. Form dot get item by ID, and the ID will be under quotation marks, this one. Now that I have my question, it will be easy, relatively easy to change the contents of the question. So I'm going to go to course question, and here is the importance of knowing the type of question we have, because now I need to use this method as, and in the as, I need to tell it what kind of question is it. So in this case, it will be as multiple choice item because it is a multiple choice question. Okay. This way 
Google Apps Script identifies that we're talking about a multiple choice question. And now we're going to choose the set choice values and set choice values requires an array. So for now, we're going to put an array here that says a first one, all of these in quotation marks, comma, first two, comma, first three. That's it. Let's save and let's run our update question. Let's go to our forms and here, voila, it changed the options of the question. So I did the first step. It works. The second step is that this comes from here, from my sheet. Okay. And remember that I need at least an array. So I need to access this and convert this somehow in a list. So let's connect to our worksheet with spreadsheet app dot directive spreadsheet. This is the way to connect to our Google sheet file. Now I want to connect to this particular option sheet. So I'm going to say option spreadsheet or options spreadsheet. And for this, we're going to use the get sheet by name method, ws dot get sheet by name and the name, I think it's options. Yes, it is. Now that I'm in this sheet, I need to access this range, the range that starts in A2 and goes up to whatever. So variable option range, it will be options spreadsheet dot get range and my range will start in A2 and it will go up to any row with options. So now I have this range. Unfortunately, a range will do no good. I need to do a list. But first, remember that I'm accessing A2 to A. So I'm going to access this up to all my rows. So what is preferable to do at the beginning is to remove all blanks first. So for these two things, for removing all blanks and turning this into a list, we're going to use the methods filter and then map. I forgot one thing before, and it's that I need the method get values at the end. So this turns actually into an array because this is a range, but this is an array. So actually this is not going to be called option range, but option array or options array. Now, my options array, given that is an array, now I can use the filter method. So I'm going to filter. What I'm going to filter is everything that is blank. So this I can do it row by row. I'm going to just return whatever has something in its row so that it will delete all the blanks. This I can call it in another variable called filtered option array. And finally, I'm going to my filtered options array, I'm going to apply a map function that is very similar to the filter function. But in this case, for every row, I'm going to return the position zero of the row. I'm going to show you uh, how this works, because if you've never heard of filter or map, you're going to be a bit confused. And I'm going to store this in a option list. So let's first lock the options array. Then let's lock the filtered options array. And finally, let's lock the option list. Actually, this is options list. That's it for now. Well, here I'm not changing every, anything. So this will, I, I think this will not uh, give an error. Let's save and let's run. I need permissions again because the last time I gave permissions for Google Forms, not for Google Sheets. Okay, so this, this is the process I wanted to show you. First, I did options, get range, get values, and it returned this with all these blanks. In order to remove the blanks, I did this filter row. And what I told them is, please bring me only the things that in the first position that is here inside of each array, it has something, not blank. 
So in this case, we only have three rows where we have something in the row. Introduction to sheet, introduction to forms, introduction to abstract. Perfect. And then I said, okay, this doesn't work for me because this is an array. You can see that here I have a square bracket for each option. And then I have another square bracket that encloses everything. So I need to remove this inner square bracket. In other words, I want to turn an array to a list or a bidimensional array, to be more technical, to a single or an unidimensional array. This is what I do. And this, I do it with the map function, where I said for each row, just return the value inside the row. And now I have my list and this is what I need. Okay. This is the options list. I, I hope I, I've been clear. <laughs> and now here, instead of this array that I've hard coded, I'm going to give my options list. That's it. Let's save and let's run. And here I'm not changing anything. Actually, I did change. Remember, this was course one, course two, course three. And now it's introduction to sheets, introduction to forms, introduction to app script. That is exactly what I have here. So I've done it successfully. Now, what I want to do is that this updates automatically. I could do this in a number of ways. This could update every time the form is opened, every time the form is sent, every five minutes, every time I have a change here. I think this could work. For example, if I added something here, then update my form. I think this could work this way. So for this, I'm going to include this update question inside an onEdit function. So function on edit. And inside the onEdit, I'm going to add the update question. That's it. The thing about onEdit is that sometimes with some specific actions, it won't work. For example, this open by ID won't work. So what I'm going to do instead is to go to my triggers. Let's save this first, go to our triggers, and we're going to add the edit trigger manually. So I'm going to choose the update question, and I'm going to say that this will trigger every time there is an edit on the on the Google Sheet. Let's save, and let's try again. Let's add introduction to Google Data Studio. Let's go to our forms and it changed automatically. And if I add uh, advanced people tables, this automatically changes. And if I go, if I update my published form, I already have the options. Okay. Excellent. Just the thing to keep in mind is that if your question is not multiple choice, but a drop down or list or a checklist, the only thing you're going to change here is here. So instead of as multiple choice item, you could have as list item if it's a drop down or a checkbox item if it's in the boxes where you can select more than one. Just keep this in mind and everything will work. The other thing to keep in mind is that if you have multiple questions that you need to update, then the only thing you're going to change is this. The variable will be another one with the corresponding ID. And here you will change, as I just told you, if it's a multiple choice or a list or a checkbox. And of course, the option list will be the one you're going to do this same process, but for any other table you want in your Google Sheets. I'm going to delete this so that my code, it's a bit more lean. And that's it. That's the code. I hope you liked the video. You can access the code and the template in the Patreon page. And if not, you can support me just by subscribing and hitting the notification button in the same place. So thank you so much and see you in the next video.